After my dad d ed, his mistress and her kids harassed mom and me for half the inheritance, so I stalked her, caught her cheating on her sick husband, and exposed everything online. Hey, so my mother and I are in a really difficult spot right now after my father passed away a couple of weeks ago and I did something. I don't think I did anything wrong, but the people close to me think I went too far and it's messing with me. So, for some backstory, my father, 54M, passed away a month ago from a heart attack. It was really sudden and nobody saw it coming, so it was a huge shock for all of us. My mother, 52F, and I, 26F, have been trying to get his affairs in order, and recently, we also found out about his extramarital affair. It was a huge shock because my parents had been married for almost decades and we had no idea that my father was even capable of this. We had a funeral for him, and after that, my mother's friend from college, Alice, 52F, came clean to her and confessed that she had been having an affair with my dad for the past 10 years. At first, we didn't even believe her, but then she started showing us pictures and screenshots of her conversations and emails with my dad. She told us things that only we knew about our father and even told us about the burner phone that he used to text her from. Alice and my mother had been friends since college, and even though they were not close after graduation, they would still meet a couple of times a year at parties and stuff. And one of those times, my mother had attended a college friend's party with my father, and there they had run into Alice and her husband. That was a really long time ago, but my dad and Alice started their 10 year long affair at that point, which only ended with his demise. My mother and Alice had met several times over the years, and nobody had ever suspected anything because my dad was just that great of an actor, and so was Alice. So when my mother finally found out about the affair, she was shattered. She was already finding it very difficult to deal with the grief of losing her husband, and now she had to deal with the fact that he had been cheating on her. The worst part was that my father had pretended to love my mother until his very last breath and my mother had been convinced that she was the only woman in his life because she had no reason to suspect otherwise. As if this was not bad enough, Alice and her kids started harassing my mother to include her and her kids in the will informally because she felt like she deserved something out of my father's death because she had loved him. She has two sons, both around my age, kind of younger actually. And all of them have been calling and texting my mother relentlessly trying to get her to include them in the will. The will is in probate right now, but the problem is that my father had phrased it vaguely, and if Alice wants to, then she and her kids could definitely challenge the will. Alice forced my mother to tell her the contents of the will when she had first come over to tell her about the affair, and my mother couldn't even say no to her because she had been just desperate and grief stricken by my father's passing. There was also the fact that Alice herself had a pretty sad existence. Her husband had been diagnosed with early onset dementia a couple of years ago, and she was having a hard time coming to terms with the fact that he might not make it for long. She had quit her full time job to work from home and was a nurse to her husband. Her husband had also been to the same college as my mother and was a senior. He was actually a pretty nice guy, which is why everybody felt bad for Alice, including my mother, who has pretty much lost her head ever since my father passed away. I hate to say this about my mother, but she hasn't ever been the most mentally stable and emotionally strong person, and this incident has shaken her up even more. She has done quite a lot of stupid things, the first being telling Alice the contents of the will. She told me that she felt bad for her, even though the woman had been cheating with her husband and had broken her marriage. But my mother claimed that she couldn't bring herself to hide the contents of the will from Alice, especially when both of them were crying about the same man. She had almost even agreed to split everything with Alice, but thankfully, she informed me about it and I put an end to it. Because there was no way that I was sharing anything with Alice and her kids. She might have been my dad's affair partner, but it didn't mean she had any claims to his estate, that was all ours. I made my mother cut Alice off and block her everywhere so after a few days she and her kids took to harassing me online instead. But I'm not my mother and I wasn't scared, even though they kept threatening me by saying that they would expose my father to the world by publicizing the affair. And that wouldn't be a good look for me and my family. Our reputation would really take a hit and that would also mean negative publicity for my dad's business, which I was supposed to take over. They told me that the only way out for us would be to informally split the estate and the profits from the business. That way everybody would be happy and nobody had to suffer the consequences of my dad's selfishness. But I wasn't on board with that plan and declined their offer. My mother, however, wanted to take them up on it and kept trying to persuade me to agree to their terms. She didn't even like the fact that I had been arguing with them online. In one conversation, Alice's son had told me that we were cheating them out of what they deserved and he would be forced to expose us for the frauds that we were if this continued so I had told him that his mother was the real cheater here and threatened to tell his father and ruin their marriage if they kept bothering me. The spat had become pretty nasty and all of us were only staying quiet out of fear for our reputation. She said that she didn't think it was worth it to fight them on this because otherwise, they might go public with the news of the affair, and even though it would hurt them and ruin Alice's marriage, it would hurt us more. Because then, my father's business and his reputation would take a hit and he wasn't even here to defend himself anymore. So it would be in our best interest to just agree with them and let this go because she didn't want more drama and she also didn't want to fight with Alice because she felt bad for the woman. I had plans to tell everybody about the affair myself, so they wouldn't have anything on us. But my mother begged me not to, 
mostly because she didn't think that it was necessary to malign my father's image after he was gone and we should be trying to preserve it instead. But also because she felt bad for Alice since she had been manipulated into thinking that Alice would use the money to support her family because her husband wasn't in a stable condition anymore. So she kept begging me to just split everything and sweep this under the carpet because she didn't want anyone to find out. I was pretty much fighting everybody on my own, including my mother, who wanted to just lay on the ground and let Alice and her kids walk all over us just because her husband was sick. But I wasn't going to take it, so I went behind my mother's back and decided to do some digging about their family so I could get some more dirt on them and run things my way. I might have gone too far but I secretly started following Alice to find out more about her comings and goings during the day. I trailed her for one week and luckily, she was too absent-minded to notice that I had been following her around. She would spend a major part of the day at home with her husband, presumably taking care of him. But in the evening, she would head out for a walk and run some errands before going into a coffee shop a little distance away from her house and spending almost three hours there. I had no idea what she would do inside for almost three hours and I didn't have the courage to go to check for the first couple of days. The coffee shop didn't have clear windows either so it was difficult to guess what was going on inside but after almost a week, I decided to go in and speak to the barista or something because I wasn't making any progress and I still had no idea what she would do there. But my gut feeling was that something was fishy and I felt like I had to follow up on it. So one day, after Alice had left the shop, I decided to go in and strike up a conversation with the barista. I tried my best to be friendly and I was lucky that the girl behind the counter was equally friendly and quite talkative. After chatting with her for a couple of minutes, I decided to ask her about Alice. And if she was weirded out by the fact that I was asking about another customer, she didn't let it show on her face and instead told me that Alice had been coming to this coffee shop almost every day for about a year. She said that she always has the same routine and the same order. She would get coffee as soon as she walked in the door and would sit and finish her coffee while waiting for her boyfriend to show up. The second that the barista mentioned her boyfriend, I realized that my instinct was right and she had indeed been having another affair, apart from my father. Because let's be real, nobody needs three hours to have coffee by themselves. Anyway, the barista went on to tell me that once her boyfriend arrived, which was usually 10 minutes after she came by, they would take the other exit and leave through the side of the building, and then Alice would come back in the same way about three hours later and leave from the main exit. That explained why I hadn't been able to see her leave the building because she had been taking the other exit and my car was positioned on the other side of the building. So after that conversation with the barista, I decided to park my car on the other side and finally get some evidence of Alice cheating. Things happened just the way that I had been told, so I was able to get some videos of Alice leaving through the side door of the coffee shop hand in hand with another man while they giggled. I even got a picture of her getting a peck on the cheek from her boyfriend. Now that I had the proof there was only one thing left to do and that was to post what I knew and make sure that Alice and her kids stopped bothering me for good and that's exactly what I went on to do. I didn't consult with my mother and just made the post without speaking to anyone about it. The only thing that had been holding me back so far was my mom and her belief that if we came out with the truth ourselves, it would somehow make things worse for us. But I didn't care anymore so I mentioned in the post how Alice had not only been cheating on her sick husband with my father but also this other man and yet she had the audacity to claim that she loved my father and believed that she was entitled to any part of his estate. Evidently, that had been a lie to try and get something out of my dad's passing. She didn't love him or anyone else, she only wanted the money and that was all. She probably wasn't even going to use it to support her family because all of them were so greedy. In the post, I also mentioned how she and her kids had been trying to blackmail me and my mother into splitting everything with them and said that the only reason I had held back for so long was because I didn't feel comfortable defaming my own father. But I was ready to own up to his mistakes now and I was also ready to expose Alice for the serial cheater that she actually was. I attached everything to the post, including proof of Alice and my father being together, Alice and her kids blackmailing me, and also the pictures and videos that I took of her with her boyfriend. Once it was all done, I posted it without a second thought and I believe that I was doing the right thing. But the reaction from my mother and my close family members has made me think otherwise. Everybody hates me now because they think that I ruined my father's reputation with that post just because I wanted to keep all his wealth to myself and called me crazy for stalking Alice. They accused me of not caring about him as a person and only putting up that post because that would make it less likely for Alice and her kids to be considered for their inheritance. And I agreed with it because my father had been cheating, all I had done was own up to it publicly so I wouldn't have to give in to Alice and her kids' demands. My mother thinks that I was way out of line because I completely destroyed his reputation. Especially when there was a very real chance that he might have gotten away with it had I not opened my mouth for my own selfish reasons. I don't understand why everybody is calling me selfish because if anything, my father was the one who had been selfish and kept a secret like this from us for a decade. I had already lost my trust in him but I was not about to let his affair partner screw me out of my inheritance. Everybody refused to even talk to me because they thought that I was selfish and entitled but I don't see anything wrong with what I did. I was just trying to protect my inheritance. My dad having an affair was his choice and exposing him for it and acknowledging his mistakes after he was gone was mine. It didn't even harm the family's business and reputation the way that everyone had thought that it would. 
Some people did say that this was messed up but that was about it. Everything is still going just as smoothly as it was before and I think people are really overreacting and making a big deal out of this. If anything I think my mother should be thankful that I spared her from sharing her wealth with the other woman. That would have been pretty insulting if it actually ended up happening. But now Alice has deleted all her social media and her sons are also not bothering me anymore. I think I really saved everybody out here but instead of being thanked, everybody is making me out to be the villain and it's making me question my decision. I still feel like exposing my father's reality to the world was a very small price to pay so that we could get to keep the inheritance without Alice and her kids constantly holding it over our heads. And also, I think we should not forget that they were planning to do this all informally so they might have tried to extort more money out of us in the future as well if we let them get away with it this time. And it was for the best if we just came clean to everyone ourselves. There was no reason for us to keep hiding it because it wasn't as though my mother or I had made the choice of cheating, it had been my father and now that he was gone there was no point in trying to protect him or his reputation from something that he would never have to deal with the consequences of anyway. But my mother and I were still here and I just felt it was unfair that we would have to pay the price for his cheating and sacrifice our inheritance to keep Alice's mouth shut. That's not even our fault and it's crazy to expect us to continue trying to cover up for a man who had no respect for us. If he had any respect for my mother or his family then he never would have cheated and I can't imagine why everyone is continuing to defend him. Not being alive doesn't suddenly make him a saint and I think it's time that people started accepting that instead of trying to make me the bad guy. But my mom still doesn't believe it and is refusing to speak to me. It's been really lonely and difficult and I have no idea what to do next. Ida for exposing my father and his affair partner because she was trying to extort money from me? Update 1, it's with a heavy heart that I'm writing this update to tell you guys that I have decided to cut my mother out of my life. I don't think that we can reconcile after this because I tried to speak to her a couple of days ago and she said the most horrific things to me. I don't think I can ever recover from that and I don't wish to speak to her ever again. It's been two weeks since she stopped speaking to me first but I still kept trying to talk to her and make her see my side of things. Unfortunately, she just wasn't interested, she was convinced that I had ruined my father's legacy and reputation and wanted nothing to do with me. It was incredibly frustrating for me as well because I kept trying to explain to her that I hadn't done anything to defame my father, he did it quite well himself. And it was worth doing it because otherwise, Alice and her kids would just keep holding the affair over our heads and force us to do whatever she wanted us to do. I tried to explain to her that my father was the real culprit here as well as Alice and her kids and I was just trying to look out for me and her. The last time that I called my mother to talk to her yet again, she told me that she didn't want to speak to me anymore and that she was sick and tired of my excuses. She said that after this, I was only allowed to contact her if it was to issue an apology but other than that she didn't want to hear from me. I was really upset and I told her that she was the one who should be feeling sorry for me because I was the one who was being ostracized just for speaking the truth and trying to protect us. I reminded her that my father's side of the family wasn't going to look out for her and they had proven it already by turning her against me, even though I was the one who spoke up and tried to protect us from being pushed even further into a corner by Alice. If my father's family could have it their way, they would just hush everything up and brush it all under the rug. Even if that had to be done at the cost of my and my mother's future. They didn't care about us, they only cared about the reputation that my father had and protecting their own family name. I was trying to make my mother realize that but instead, she turned on me and told me that she didn't need me to look out for her. Since I wasn't even capable of looking out for myself. When I asked her what that meant, she told me that the family was planning to exclude me from the will and contest it. So all the hard work that I had put into running behind Alice and proving that she had no real love for my father and they were not the star-crossed lovers that she was making them out to be was all futile. My mother told me that I had screwed everything up, not just for myself but also for her. Because she was caught in the middle of all of this even though she didn't want to be involved in this mess in any capacity. She had only wanted to split the inheritance and keep this quiet but I just had to be greedy and have it my way. And now there were several more people against me, standing in the way of my inheritance. My mother reminded me that Alice could still challenge the will and make it a long drawn process but now, I also had to worry about my father's family and that was all thanks to myself. Apparently, they believed that I didn't deserve to inherit the business anymore, even though I was still running it in my father's absence and none of them had even stepped up to take that responsibility. It was also frustrating that I started crying on the phone call with my mother after she had told me all of this. But instead of consoling me, she started telling me that this was my own fault for not listening to her and there was nothing that she could do to prevent it. She added that even if there was something, she would let this happen because she felt like I deserved this. That made me cry even harder because I would expect something like that from my father's family but not from my own mother because I had always believed that at least she loved me. I had already lost my father and now I felt like I was losing my mother as well. But while I was crying, she didn't offer a single word of consolation and just kept on reminding me that I had created this whole mess and I had to clean it up all on my own. When I tried to tell her that she was really heartless, she told me that I deserved this version of her because I had been really selfish and stupid all this while. I was still holding out hope that she might say something kind to make things less difficult for me but instead, she told me that she wished I was not her daughter and then hung up on me. 
That was the last that I spoke to her because I don't know if I can ever go back to being on good terms with my mother after what she said. I just can't. Update 2, hey, so it's been a couple of days since my last update and Alice recently reached out to me to tell me that her husband had been forced to file for divorce from her by his family because they saw the post that I had made. And now she has promised me that she was going to ruin my life just like I had ruined hers. Her kids also don't seem too happy about their parents' marriage breaking apart and for some reason, they're holding me responsible for it and not their cheating mother. It's just ridiculous to me how everyone is blaming me for things that are very obviously not my fault. I have just been speaking the truth and exposing people for what they truly are. If they don't like that then maybe they shouldn't be that way. You can't be a bad person and then get mad when you get exposed for being a bad person, that's not how the world works and that's certainly not how my world works. So they can blame me all that they want but it's not going to change the facts and it's definitely not going to stop me from speaking the truth. I have spent a considerable amount of time worrying about what everyone thinks about me but now I'm at a point where I just don't care anymore. People are going to have a problem with me speaking the truth no matter what I do because the truth is ugly and undesirable and they hate me for bringing it to their notice so they can't ignore it anymore. But that's their problem and not mine, so I don't have to worry about what they think anymore. Be it my mother or my father's family, they can do whatever they want. It doesn't matter to me anymore. I haven't heard from my mother since the last phone call and I hope that it stays that way because I don't think I have anything left to say to her. She was horrible to me and instead of grieving with me, she turned against me. I can understand that she was upset about a lot of things but that doesn't excuse her behavior because even I was upset about the very same things. As my mother, she should have stuck by me instead of trying to cover up her husband's faults, especially since he wasn't even there anymore but I'm still here. It's disgraceful and sad how she thinks that his passing away absolves him of everything that he did wrong. I love my dad and I'm always going to miss him but I can't forgive him for what he did. Maybe my mother can but she has no right to tell me if I should or not. So now I'm ready to fight against whoever comes in my way and I have accepted the fact that I'm on my own now. It's always been that way, so whatever. Update 3, well, it's official. Both my father's side of the family and Alice are now contesting the will but I'm not worried, I know what I am and what I deserve. My dad's lawyer is also fighting for me and he has known me ever since I was a child, so if he thinks that I'm doing the right thing then I probably am and I have no reason to be worried. He told me that they don't have much of a case anyway because all I did was expose my cheating father and that was only because Alice was blackmailing me and my mother for half of the inheritance. So I had to step up and do something but other than that, they have nothing against me and the best that they can do is probably just drag the process out by challenging it. But my dad's lawyer has told me that he is going to try his best and pull out all the stops in his defense. I can tell that he is really serious about this and it makes me happy that at least somebody is on my side here because I really needed that reassurance. My mother is still not talking to me but from what I hear, she has stopped speaking to my dad's family as well and wants nothing to do with them either. I received this information from my dad's lawyer obviously and he said that my mother has completely shut everyone out. I was worried for her because I didn't want to do anything stupid in her grief and I knew that she was already having a really difficult time coming to terms with so much at once. I guess I had mentioned it in my original post that my mother had never been the most emotionally stable person, so I had thought about keeping our fight aside for a while just so I could check up on her. But then I found out that she had moved out of our home with all her stuff and was now living with her sister, so I guess it's not necessary for me to check on her since she is my aunt to take care of her. I do miss her. I really wish that she would come to her senses and realize that I didn't do anything wrong, I was just trying to protect us. But right now is probably not the right time because she is struggling with her grief and that's making her say and do a lot of crazy things. So I'm going to wait for her to come around and realize that I was never the enemy, I always had our best interests at heart. It's great that she realized that my father's family was not looking out for her, which is why she cut them off. And I hope that soon I hear from her because I would really hate to lose her. I only have one parent now and in spite of whatever I said earlier, I would love to have her in my life.